Today we're looking at Final Cut Pro again. Now do you need help importing your Final Cut Pro project from your iPad to your Mac? If so, join me today and we'll take a look at a walkthrough. Now let's look at Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Uh, to get there, I'm gonna bring up kind of my most used apps here on my iPad and I'm gonna click on this icon and bring up Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Uh, you see here I have my projects on the left. Here's setup. You basically highlight whichever project you need and go to edit. Um, I hope in the future they add some sort of double click or a quicker option to actually open a project. Um, so like I said, I usually, I'll highlight and go to edit. Now one thing I do wanna point out you can click on this option here and export from the main menu once you have your project selected. So just select it. If it's complete, you know it's ready to go. You can export from there as well. And for what we're doing today, we're looking at Final Cut Pro for iPad project. And we'll look at the export options here in a second. But you could do that straight from the main menu if you would like. Now I typically go to edit because I usually upload this real time almost, whether to YouTube and such. Um, so when I'm done, I usually go ahead and export it. Not all the time, but sometimes. So to export it, there's one thing I want to note. So I'm going to look here, make sure the project's good to go. This option right here, we talked about in my other Final Cut Pro video. If you click on this, this pulls up basically your filters and I'm going to click on keywords. Let me go back. So keywords right here, I'm going to click on it. I have voiceover, iPad video and music. Now when you're categorizing, I definitely recommend if you're using Final Cut Pro on iPad, make keywords because if you are exporting this to the Mac to kind of finish the video or whatever you need to do there, it actually pulls this into the project. So it's a, just another good filter so your media is not clumped into one space. Um, so that's all I wanted to bring up. From there, this is the export button. So we're gonna click on that. And video is what I normally do, but for today we're doing Final Cut Pro for iPad project, just like on the main screen. So when you click this, you can, it defaults to incl include all media. This is what I use every time. It's really part of my workflow. It just works well. If you unclick this, no media is included. I'll show you at the end of the video what that looks like. Um, it's for some, it's like an offline project. So yes, it moves the project over with all the edits, but there's no media there. So that's only for certain workflows um, that you may be using. So. I would recommend and I'm sure most would actually use this option. So once there, let's go to export. It takes just a second on the iPad Pro to get it ready. You can airdrop if your Mac's right there. I go ahead and airdrop it. You can also copy. If you're using universal control as well, you can copy straight to your Mac. But if you have airdrop, it kind of negates that in my opinion. Uh, save to file. So if your Mac's not around, you're doing this on the go with your iPad, click on save to files and you can save it in your files app. For today, I'm going to send it over to my Mac studio. So I just clicked on that. You hear the beep and you see it's sending right now and it doesn't take long. So this is a almost a gigabyte project, but you see it sends pretty quick. So, and it shows sent right there. So basically you're done there. So you can just X out. It shows you export complete. The export was successful. So that's it. So click OK. And then from there, I'll show you what it looks like on the Mac. Let's now take a look at the Mac and we're going to look at the process of importing Final Cut Pro project from your iPad to the Mac. The first thing I'm going to show you the point of view of the Mac receiving this file via AirDrop from the iPad. So I just sent that from my iPad. You see we're receiving this, this here. So it's really the quickest option. If your Mac is around your iPad, I would definitely airdrop it. Uh, you can copy it as well. So whichever you prefer. 
but it's just a nice option. So down here, we have downloads. I'm going to open it up in Finder. And the reason I'm going to do this, I'm going to just copy it. And I'm going to place it in the folder really where I'm going to be setting up some things for this project. So I paste it there. So basically, wherever you keep your project that you're working on, you can paste it. You don't have to paste it in there, but I like to keep it there in case I needed to restart it later and I know an easy place to find it. Once you're there, I'm going to get out of downloads. Final Cut Pro is not open right now for me. If it was open, I'll show you how you can import that in a second. But since it's not, I'm just going to double click on the file. From there, it's going to ask me basically what do I want to save the Final Cut Pro pro library as so it's actually on the correct folder i could browse to another folder on the computer you know however you have it set up but it's kind of where i need it so i'm just going to hit save you can also obviously change the library name if you like to to update it um, if you wanted to change the name in the process once you're there you see the projects right here if I click on the main part, Timeline 1, that's the actual project. It does smart collections just like normal. Default, that's basically where all your stuff is as well. So under default though, you see you have iPad, music, and voiceover. This is actually the keywords that I categorized when I set, up, set it up on the iPad. In my opinion, this works well because all your media is broken out instead of grouped together or a way that you may not like so especially if you have a bunch of media files i recommend doing keywords it works well with this process um, from there i'm just going to go ahead and click on double click on timeline to open the project and you see it's set up and it runs i'll skip around and you can add whatever media you need to complete the project and you're good to go one thing I want to show you that I mentioned earlier, if Final Cut Pro is already open and you just need to import that process, that uh, export file, just go to File and the Import option. And when you go to Import, you can do Final Cut Pro for iPad Project. From there, it's defaulted to the correct folder. That's not always the case. If it's not, just navigate wherever you need to on your Mac and import it and you're good to go so i could click on this and import it again if i like but i'm not going to do that because it's already there so that's it so we've imported in there like i said add what you need to but all the options are there we're not going to get into the nuts and bolts of what you can or can't edit a lot of things you can as long as you they're kind of native to the final cut pro if you have add-ons on your Mac, you can add them at this point to make the video even better or more consistent with your other video. So there it is. I hope this helped with the process. So we'll look at one other thing here in just a second. Let's now look at one more thing. So what I'm gonna pull up here, I'm gonna pull up, I sent over a file that does not contain the media. So we spoke earlier about the file with none of the media attached so it's a much smaller file you see one and a half megabytes so I'm gonna just double click instead of copying it over to my folder so I'm gonna show you this it's gonna open up Final Cut Pro and I'm gonna save it to the same folder the library like we spoke of earlier it opens up your Final Cut Pro and then it will import this project so all this really looks the same the difference is and your def default, I just want to show you that. It's the exact same, but when you go to timeline, double click on the project, you notice none of the media is there. So it's exactly what it says. Now, one thing, the live drawing is not considered part of that. So that's included in there. So all your, really everything in the project you set up will be here. So you would just need a way to plug in that media. So if you had access to that media on another uh, Mac or server whatever it may be do you just need to locate it and plug it in like I said this doesn't apply to my workflow 
maybe it does to yours, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like just so you know the difference between the two. This video turned out to be longer than I anticipated, but I hope you grabbed some good information from it. Now I want to thank you for just continued support of the channel. Anytime you watch an entire video like this, you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment on any of my videos, it helps YouTube recommend this channel and videos more, which ultimately helps this channel grow. I really and truly do appreciate it. Thank you. Now, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you soon.